It's not graffiti exactly. It's an ancient pictorial language called Zoran. Zoran? It's from the Book of the Dead. Basically, it translates into, to live again, you must kill yourself. Jonathan. Kate, now what's your problem? An ancient language. Kate, I'm serious. But you, you could barely speak English. How in the hell do you know an ancient language? Okay, all right. You're right. I was just kidding. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, uh, she used a ninja star. See? This one's totally connected with the rest of the franchise. Funny enough, this thing does link up with the original, but in a really roundabout way. Returning to the mystical fold ten years later after two unconnected sequels, the dark conjurer himself, Peter Leopis, is back, but not in the way you'd expect. He's no longer the descendant of a satanic leader who got his kick sacrificing maidens and hanging around with little beasties. Instead, he's a burnout LA detective with a severe drinking problem and a taste for hookers. In a tossed off detail, he's described as a dead ringer for his Ghoulies 1 character in Our World, implying that this is a multi-dimensional tale. Pretty heady stuff, except that the creatures who drop that tidbit of info are pretty fucking far from what I'd call Ghoulies. They're much closer to the goblins of Troll 2, but with a goofier sense of humor and much less of an aversion to meat. What's odd about their presence is that they could be cut out of the movie and it really wouldn't matter much. Most of the action revolves around Leapis, his leather-clad mental patient X, and the evil spirit Faust, for whom she works and who wants a precious stone that can bring him into our world. We even get a bit of time cop logic here because Faust and Leopis can't exist within the same realm. Why? Oh, you'll have to find this in a bargain bin to find out. Sometimes I wonder whom these films are made for. Director Jim Wynorski, who never found a breast, a head explosion, or a daffy situation he couldn't stage for his camera, keeps things light and slapsticky. But there's no nudity and little in the way of violence like in G2 or 3. So who are they expecting to enjoy this? I assume 12 year old boys who aren't ready for the hard stuff but don't mind taking a gander at Stacey Randall, whose outfit does most of her acting. There's a honeymooners riff, oh the kids are gonna love that. Casual racism. Drop the gun, drop it now or I swear by Allah I will kill you. Relax, don't shoot, I'm a cop. I will kill you, I'm a cop, no. You idiot, I said I'm a cop. and a useless mental asylum plot thread, which is incidentally named after one of Wynorski's regular cinematographers, Zoran Hochstadter. The effects in the finale are also pretty laughable, with Randall literally running backwards to signify getting zapped into another dimension. The trolls, uh, I mean, uh, munchies, I, I mean, hobgoblins, ugh, fine, ghoulies have so little to do with the main plot, it's all disjointed, and when we get an exposition dump, it's so clunkily presented that one character asks, And do you think this because... It's got a few chuckles, but it's a far cry from the zaniness of 2 and 3. Thanks for watching, you horror hounds. A lot of great stuff coming up this month, so keep on subscribing and keep on watching. Take care and happy Halloween.